A year has passed since the day six of my brethren of the Coven of Calluses, as well as myself, left our mountain home on a mission. Our holy order venerates the gut of spurting, a god whose domain is that of disease and healing. Our sworn duty is that of healing the afflicted, balancing the humors, and mending broken bone and torn flesh. Under this noble task, we ventured down the rolling hills of the mountainside until one of our members received a divine vision as he slept. This intersection in the road we had camped at would be the perfect location for a temple dedicated to the gut of spurting. We called this new location Saramiseth, Great Quest. With unwavering determination, we commenced our holy task. At first, we felled trees in the area, as well as marked pasture land for our herd of sheep. Their wool would not only clothe us in the years to come, but could also be used for bandages to mend the injured. Those of us familiar with a pick were tasked with digging into the ground to find stone to shape into the foundations of our sacred haven. It seems that the gut of spurting smiled upon us, for as we mined spiral staircases down into the bones of the earth, we discovered a hidden gem, a cavern untouched by mortal hands. As lumber was gathered, sheep were tended to, and stone was quarried, one dwarf whose skills were different from the rest would rise to prominence. Zuglar, the Mace Dwarf, was made Captain of the Guard. Admittedly, it was meant as an honorary title in such a small group, but his first quest came in the form of a giant and rather swift rat threatening our woolen friends. Our new captain was given quite the workout as the rat eluded his mace for the longest time, but to Zuglar's credit, his determination won in the end and he ended the vile threat of the large rodent. There was no rest to be gained for the captain, as only a few days after his return did trogs make their way up from the caverns and were dispatched in quick order. Nearing the end of our first winter in these lands, as more and more quarried stone was made available, work began on the temple. A modest construction at first, a single room with doors on both ends was erected. In the future, we will allow it to act as an entrance hall of sorts where dwarves can intermingle out of the elements before entering the temple proper. I lament that this first room in our future hallowed halls was not to be used for fervent communication with our lord, but more practical needs as were, and still are required of this space. It is in use for shielding our writings from the element, and as an office of sorts for the management of tasks and resources of Saramitheth. I look forward to the day when this office space can be moved to a more secluded portion of the temple, as I must currently duck periodically as to not be hit in the head by passing lumber for the walls and flooring. As the snow melted and the first signs of life returned to the roadside, our miners began to mark out spaces for bedrooms in the stone under the temple floors. Our members would not need to live in tents and the caravan that bore us here for much longer. The local wildlife also proved itself to be an increasing nuisance around this time, scaring the sheep and toppling over piles of quarried stone. Thus, we elected to use some of that stone to begin building an enclosure for our pasture to keep our cherished fluffy friends safe. In early summer, we received most disturbing news. It seems that a rather large band of undead creatures were spotted in the northwest, none too far from our new home. These strange, tall, eyeless creatures had stocky antennae not unlike that of insects and rough, dark, cracked skin. Such necromantic experiments are an affront to our revered god of illness and healing. Zuglar was preparing defenses to fend off the nightmarish abominations, but they departed soon after arriving. I'm unclear if they were a scouting party, if they were escapees from some cruel master, or even if they had spotted our haven at all. I am glad that they are gone, however. God protect us should they return armed. As summer reached its zenith, eight of the initial bedrooms were completed. This warmed my heart as we could finally all retire for the evening in stone-encased lodgings, a much more comfortable place for a dwarf to live. This said, I feared that if others of our order were to join us, we would soon need more lodgings for them. 
our head miner marked up more rooms to be dug. My fears proved true as two new members joined us, it seems that tents would temporarily shelter their devotion. As the season of bountiful harvest came upon us, the chapel for our temple was finally completed. Within its sacred walls we found solace and warmth, a refuge for devout prayers and fervent communion with our God. Underground, our efforts turned to the construction of a dining room and kitchen, nestled beneath the ground near the bedrooms. Although the dining room's completion would elude us this year, progress steadily advanced and we all look forward to proper cooked meals and brewed wine. A trade caravan from the kingdom made its way into our lands, but its traders brought very few beasts of burden to carry their goods with them. Thus, we struggled to find crafted goods light enough to make their long travels possible. In the end, we traded small trinkets for mounds of clay, a valuable asset for future craft dwarf ship, waiting patiently to be shaped into jugs and mugs in years to come. To safeguard the tranquility of our sacred grounds, Zuggler valiantly chased boars that dared trespass upon our temple. Though the swine proved elusive, his unwavering vigilance ensured the sheep remained undisturbed, their gentle bleating a reminder of the harmony within our haven. As the year draws to a close, I pen these final words with optimism and hope. The hospital, the holiest of all chambers within our temple, remain under construction. Its completion awaits a touch of a roof, beds to cradle the weary, and the implements of healing that shall mend the afflicted. But with hearts full of devotion, we look to the coming year, confident that our divine mission will flourish in all its glory. In humble reflection, I offer gratitude for the steadfast dedication of our brethren whose unwavering spirit has carried us through the trials and triumphs alike. May the gut of spurting bless our people with good health or at least swift healing. Nom Ijen Ikast Bom. This is a leather bound journal. The written portion consists of a 10 page chronicle entitled The Founding of Saramiseth, authored by Eurist Besmaragas. It concerns the founding of the Temple of the Coven of Calisus in Saramiseth in year 8. The writing drives forward relentlessly. Overall, the prose is amateurish at best.